Hey everybody, and Mr. Mathlog here, and this lesson is uh, called Multiply with uh, the Distributive Property. Sorry, that's in the way. That says Distributive Property right there. And we'll go ahead and begin. We're going to do this with, it's called Partial Product. So our Common Core Strand is there. So here we're going to ask ourselves, how can we use the Distributive Property? Sorry, that's a tongue twister. To multiply a two-digit number by a one-digit number. So we'll go ahead and get started here. So the Distributive Property states that when multiplying a sum uh, by a number, it's the same as multiplying each add end by the number and then adding the products. Okay, let me show you something. I'm going to go to my board and, and go up here and do this. I'll try and twist my computer over so we can do this. First time I've ever done this. So, so for example, if I had uh, uh, six, whoops, let me get a, a pin here. Uh, six times um, uh, five plus four, that's going to be the same as six times five plus 6 times 4. And what we do is we distribute this through. Okay, so this will be 30 uh, plus 24, and that would get you 54 right there. Okay, but I'm going to show you using some models here and some, some rectangles and stuff. So let's go ahead and give it a shot here. Hopefully you heard me there. So here's an example. Uh, use the grid to outline a rectangle 6 by 13. Okay, so there's a grid right there. 6 uh, squares by 13 squares, okay? And then uh, we're going to think of 13 as 5 plus 8 and break it apart. Now remember, the, the area of a rectangle is just um, um, uh, uh, height times width or base times height or length times width. However, your teacher wants to do that right here. So, so all of these little squares inside of here would be whatever uh, 6 times 13 is. So what we're going to do is break this up and make it into two smaller rectangles that are 5 and 8. So it's going to be uh, 6 by 5 and 6 by 8. So here it is right there. Okay. And then uh, what we're going to do now is shade the smaller rectangles right there. So there's, um, uh, there's 6 by 5 and there's 6 by 8 right here. See, this is 6 right here also. Okay, and then I can find the area of this rectangle is 6 times 5, which is 30, and the area of this rectangle is going to be 6 times 8, which is 48, okay? So let me move that up there here. So um, uh, we're going to use the distributive property, and we're going to find the area of the smaller rectangles. We just did that by finding the product, and then, uh, then we're going to find the sum of those products, okay? So here we go. We're going to go ahead and do 6 times 5. And 6 times 8. 6 times 5 gets me this one is 30. And 6 times 8 gets me this one is 48 right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is add these two numbers together. So 30 plus 48 is going to go right here. 30 plus 48. And if we add those together, I get 78 right there. Okay, so um, uh, remember it started with 6 by 13. So 6 by 13 is the same as um, uh, 6 by 5 plus a 6 by 8 right there. And we broke up that 13 right there. Okay. All right, so, and this is what I do. I do the distributive property. So 6 times 13 is the same as 6 times 5 plus 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. And then we can distribute, we call it, the 6 times 5 plus, there's the plus sign right there, and then the 6 times 8, okay? And it gets us, um, uh, 6 times 5 is 30, 6 times 8 is 48, and we add them together and we get 78 on that, okay? Easy enough. Let's try another uh, pair of numbers that adds up to 13, something like a 9 and 4. Okay, so we'll model this by 9 and 4, and we'll do the same thing. So we'll go ahead and do uh, 6 times 9, and then we'll do this one. It's going to be 6 times 4, okay? So we're going to break it up just like we did before. So 6 times 9 plus 4. Now we're going to find the products, and then we're going to add them together, okay? So 6 times 9 is 54, and 6 times 4 is 24. So now we're going to add 54 and 24 together, and 54 and 24, by golly, gets us 78 again. Okay, remember, 9 plus 4 is 13, so this, this rectangle right here, which is uh, 6 by, by uh, 13 right here, is the same as... 5 plus 8 or 9 plus 4 or you can do 10 plus 3. That would probably be the easier one right there. So these two rectangles are the same. This area has 78 because these two guys together also have 78 right there. Okay, so what I did was I changed, uh, this time I changed 13 to 9 plus 4. And then we did uh, 6 times 9 and then 6 times 4 right there. 6 times 9 is 54 and then 6 times 4 is 24. And when you add those together, you get 78. Okay. Again, I would probably choose, um, so these guys are equal. I'm just showing you that those guys are equal right there. They're the same rectangle right there. So uh, explain how we found the total number of rectangles when we re represented each 6 by 13 rectangle. Well, we first made the 6 by 13 into two smaller rectangles of 5 and 8, 6 by 5 and 6 by 8. Then we added 6 times 5, which is 30, and 6 times 8, which is 48. We added those together to get 78. 
Then we did it again and we made our um, 6 by 13 into 6 by 9 and 6 by 4 because 9 plus 4 is also 13. Okay, 6 times 9 is 54, 6 times 4 is 24, 78. So we get 78 both ways. So 6 times 13 equals 78 in both ways. So, so here's this is what I like doing is this little trick right here. If I can multiply by a power of 10, that is the ticket. So evaluate, you guys. To, evaluate, to find 8 times 34, would it be easier to break up the 34 as 30 plus 4 or 25 plus 8 or any other sum? Okay, and I would choose um, the 30 plus 4, you guys, because I can do mental math by multiplying by 30. 8 times 3 is 24, so 8 times 30 is a 24 with a 0. So here's my 30 plus 4 right there. There's my 34, so it's the same as 8 parentheses. I should have wrote that up there. I'll go up there and do that. So, so, so this guy right here, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let me do that one here. This guy right here is now 8 times 30 plus 4. And then I can distribute the 8 through as 8 times 30. And that gets me 240. And then do 8 times 4 is 32 right there. And so you can, you can add those together and you get 272. Okay, I hope you guys can hear me like that, okay? All right, and then, uh, so let's make a connection. So another way to model problems is to use base 10 blocks to show the 10s and 1s. So here we go. So um, we're going to do uh, 6 times 13 again, and we're going to use base 10 blocks. So, so here I have, um, uh, here's, here's uh, 6 rows of 13. See, here's a row of 10, and then here's 3 1s right here. So here's 13, here's 13, here's 13, here's 13. And if we added all those up, it's going to get a 78. But what you can do is with the base 10 blocks is you can break the models into 10s and 1s. So here's 6 times 1 10s. Okay, so there's a 1 10 and there's 6 of them right there. And so when I multiply 6 times 10, I'm going to get 60. And over here, I have 6 times uh, 3 1s. So when I multiply 6 times of the 3 1s, 6 times 3 is going to get me 18. So now I can go ahead and add 60 plus 18 together and that's going to go ahead and get me uh, 78 okay so 6 times 13 is 78 no matter which way you want to do that right there okay so in this step right over here these are called uh, partial products right here so we did 6 times 10 and 6 times 13 they were partial products of um, uh, I'm sorry 6 times 3 I think I said 13 they're partial products of 6 times 13 okay and the partial products are ended up being this 60 and this 18 right there all right. All right. Nice, fast lesson. I hope that worked well, and I hope you guys are having a great year. Take care, you guys.